Hi everybody, it's Brian from the MacMob.com and today I'll be bringing you my little review of this mobile Bluetooth keyboard for the iPad. I picked this up for about 45 bucks on eBay and it's pretty much a cheaper version of Zag and Logitech's iPad 2 keyboard case that they sell for over $100. So it's 99 plus tax and or shipping. So the price is over 100 bucks. This one was only 45, including shipping, and it got here in about three days. So that's pretty good. So now I'm going to bring you a quick unboxing of the product. So here is the packaging. You can see through it so you can see the keyboard case itself. And over at the bottom of the package, you can see some of the specs. It gives you Bluetooth info. It gives you your battery life. So if you want to pause your video to take a look at that, you can go ahead and do so. Now this case does come in two different colors. You have one with black keys and you have one with white keys as shown on the packaging. I got the black one because at the time of purchasing it, I didn't know there was a white one. So the seller on eBay automatically sent me the black one. There's some of the specs for the keyboard case. If you want to pause your video to take a look at it, there you go. And we are getting into the box right now. So there's three things in the box. You get the keyboard case, a little informational sheet that gives you some specs and a how-to on how to pair it with your iPad or other Bluetooth device. And there's also something else which I will show you in a in about 10 seconds or so. Now I'm taking out the little product product information sheet. So this gives you some specs of the keyboard case and it also gives you some of its features. Now on the other side of this, it will tell you how to pair it up with your iPad. Now this is just a Bluetooth keyboard, so if you want to pair this up to your computer or an Android device, you, you are free to do so. And on the other side of the box, we do have a little compartment for the USB cable. So this is used for charging the built-in rechargeable battery for the uh, for the Bluetooth keyboard case. So you could just plug this into your computer, plug one end into your keyboard case, and you are good to go. Now onto the keyboard itself. Let me give you a little overview of everything. In the lower right, we have a little Bluetooth button, and this is uh, for when you actually pair it up. This will blink blue, and then once you have it paired, you won't see this again. The charge indicator here will, here will light up red if you are charging the keyboard. If it's finished charging, the light will just turn off. Now on this side, we have the USB port so that we can charge the battery in the keyboard case. On this side, we have a connect button and a little on-off switch. Now here we have a little lip so that once you put your iPad 2 face down into the keyboard case, you can lift it up easily. Nothing on this side. Nothing on this side. On this side we have the USB port as I just mentioned. And on the underside we have four little nubs sticking out of the bottom plate so that once you put it on your surface, it'll be lifted up just a little bit. Now let me give you a slightly closer look at the keys, it's keys themselves. So these are chiclet style keys similar to the MacBook Pro. In fact, they feel a lot like it to be honest. They're, the keys are very nice to push. They give you good feedback. Now let me go ahead and show you the top row of buttons because we do have some iOS spe uh, specific buttons. So this one will acts as your home button so you can push it once to go to your home screen. If you have multitasking on your device, you could push this twice to go to the multitasking dock. As you can see, it just happened on my, on my iPad too. Now here we have a spotlight button. So if you have spotlight enabled on your device, I have it disabled on mine through a jailbreak tweak, you will be able to quickly access that page. These two buttons will allow you to adjust the brightness on your iPad. If you have photos on your iPad, you can push this button and it'll turn it into picture frame mode. And if you are in a in an application, because normally if you're using an external keyboard, the virtual keyboard will automatically go away. So this button will, will allow you to hide it or bring it back up. Now here we have three media keys. So this is for fast uh, rewind and previous song, play pause, Fast forward, next song. Here we have a couple of volume adjustment buttons, so volume up, down, and mute. And if you are using a Mac, you could use this button to eject your optical disc in your optical drive. Now, my initial complaint when using this keyboard is the super tiny right shift button. You can see that it's the same size as the rest of the keys. And personally, when I'm typing on a keyboard, I always use the right shift. I never use the left one. So that was a little bit disappointing. So I had to get used to using the left one. It took about 30 minutes. Occasionally I'll be able to hit the right shift without actually hitting the up arrow because I've, I've been doing that a lot as well. So using this keyboard because of the overall smaller space and small keys, you will have to get used to it. 
So that will take you about 30 minutes to an hour. In my case, it took about an hour to get used to it after, you know, typing on it for tweeting and replying to emails and stuff. So let me go ahead and show you the keyboard case while it's, uh, or the iPad while it's in the case. So you just have to put your iPad into it like this and you are good to go. So if you're interacting with your iPad and you're tapping on the screen, you could tap pretty hard on your screen without having to worry about everything falling over. But if you're using your iPad in portrait orientation, you will have to tap light. You can see that it almost just fell over. So you're gonna have to type very lightly on your iPad screen. So just make sure that you are aware of that before trying to push on your screen rather hard. So I'm gonna go ahead and give you a little typing demonstration on this keyboard. Let me just reposition my camera to give you a better viewing angle of everything. So I'm not sure if you can see the text that I'll actually be typing, but I'll read it aloud. So this is a typing test when using this keyboard. The keys are rather small, so you'll have to get used to using them. Overall, this keyboard is quite nice and oops. And for those who don't like using the virtual keyboard, this is a nice and stylish alternative. So you can see that I was able to type that, you know, little paragraph rather quickly. There are a number of errors, but I'm I'm, I'm standing up while typing on the keyboard, so it's not as not as a not as nice, I guess. Overall, it, it is a very nice keyboard. You will have to get used to using the small keys. You'll have to use this keyboard quite a bit to actually get used to everything. Um, to be honest, I love the virtual keyboard on the iPad. So this time I'm going to go ahead and sh try and type the same stuff when using the iPad. So let me get my smart cover so that it'll put my iPad up at an angle. And we will go ahead and try this using the virtual keyboard. So let me turn Bluetooth off using SB settings. So here we go. This is a typing test when using the virtual keyboard. The keys seem slightly larger than the ones on the physical keyboard that I have just shown you guys. But overall, I still like typing on the virtual keyboard a little more than using a physical keyboard. So as you can see, I could still type very quickly using the virtual keyboard. I'm still sort of trying to type on it at a weird angle, so I'm not going to be able to type on it as accurately as I usually do. But back to the keyboard itself, this is a very nice product. Very affordable at 45 bucks on eBay as compared to the more expensive version from Zag and Logitech. So if you are in the market for a physical keyboard where you could take your iPad and lay it down in the case, I don't know if I actually showed you that yet. So let me go ahead and do that. So let's go ahead and take the iPad, put it into the case like so, lay it down flat, push it into place, and you're good to go. Now your iPad sits very nicely into this, so you don't have to worry about it sort of moving around. But if you do drop this on the ground, your iPad will most likely fall out of it. So just make note of that. Now what's cool about this case is it does support the sleep-wake function. So you can see that the iPad is on, now it's off, now it's on, now it's off. So that's a nice little touch. So if you have any comments, questions, or suggestions about this or anything else, you can leave them down below in the comments area. But that's it with the video. So thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you all very soon.